Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Shalom. All praises, glories and honors to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Bashim, Racha Kudash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who have taught me this truth, as well as men of like mind. Shalom wa chasad to the elect of the nation of Israel, whom so called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and Israelite foreigners of the sea land of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who must get here in America, which is Babylon the Great, and abroad to you, I say Shalom, and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shara, this lesson is edifying. Now, you know, Tawadi Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shafar inspired me with his Holy Spirit to do this lesson. I just woke up and, you know, I was just, you know, meditating on how I've noticed that our people are back really fully into that party spirit, that jolly, jolly, folly, folly, party, party spirit. And they truly believe in their heart of hearts that. Everything is going to so-called be okay because Esau, Edom, the wicked, according to Malachi chapter 1 verse 4, who is a so-called Caucasian race, beginning with their hegemony, their elites, they genuinely believe that everything is going to be okay simply because these devils said so. They trust so much in the shadows of Egypt, in the protections of Egypt, <coughs> that they have completely forgotten and have not considered Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai in all their ways and all their doings. Okay? They, they do not fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. They do not fear the consequences of their actions against the Heavenly Father Yahweh through His Son Yahweh Shai because they live that so-called YOLO life which is that Epicureanistic life that you only live once life you know and they continue to scoff and scorn and mock at the words man but this is saint matthew 24 verse 37 but as in the days of Noah, were so shall also the coming of the son of man be now how is the son of man gonna come or lord yahweh shai he's gonna come like a thief in the night just like the rain had suddenly came down during our forefather Noah's time. And that was something that was unprecedented because back then the dew was the thing that watered the plants and the soil and the earth. Okay? So rain was very, very strange to the people back then when they had first started seeing it but that was judgment from the heavenly father Yahweh through son Yahweh Shai and the Lord was warning our people back then were known as the sons of God sons of the of the powers of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and they didn't take heed to Noah they didn't take take heed to the warnings of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, just like they are not taking heed today. Therefore, they're gonna reap what they sow. Okay? They sow the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and living their lives contrary to the scriptures, and they're gonna reap destruction, they're gonna reap perdition. They're going to reap the indignation of Yahweh through his son Yahweh Shai. Because you see, the Lord is coming back with a sword, man. And as you beat your flames of fire. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So as the rain had suddenly came down during the times of our forefather Noah and completely flooding the earth <coughs> from above and below. Likewise, likewise, excuse me, will our Lord Yahweh Shai 
return unto two thirds of the nation of Israel. Second Peter's, Second Peter, excuse me, chapter three, verse ten. But the day of the Lord Yahweh by Shemi Awashai will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the current heaven that we are subject to is the heaven is the rulership of Esau Ian the wicked. In whose hand, pursuant to the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24, the earth has been given into for a period of time. According to the book of Job, the 20th chapter. Okay. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, the first verse. To everything, there's a season. Okay. This current heaven, this current rulership is going to pass away with a great noise by way of the thermonuclear missiles and the fire that will come from them. Because these weapons are the weapons of the Lord's indignation. According to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 25, But the day of the Lord, Yahweh, by Shem Shai, will come as a thief in the night, just as in the days of Noah, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, while we have the thermonuclear fire. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are we are ye to be in our holy conversation and godliness? So seeing that the Lord is gonna do all these things when he returns as a thief in the night upon two thirds of the nation of Israel, because he's not gonna return like a thief in the night upon the elect of the nation of Israel. Why? Because the Lord told us, Lord's willing, I am of the elect as well as you, brethren, to watch as well as pray. And if we're constantly watching by measuring the times diligently in itself, filtering everything that we read through the news, you know, filtering everything that we read on the news and newspapers and articles and, and filtering them through the scriptures, then we would know that the Lord is very near. Okay, so the elect are always watching. But as for two thirds, they are in that deeply sleeping state. You know, only living their lives in a YOLO fashion, in an epicureanistic fashion, partying, reveling. Even as I speak, you got niggas probably leaving the club or a bar now drunk, blasted. So seeing that the Lord is going to bring all these judgments very soon, especially during the time of Jacob's trouble. What manner of person are we to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of Yahweh Bashemi Shai. And that's what we do. We hasten, man, unto the coming of the day of the Lord. Okay? Because we want to be delivered. And we want to see our enemies go down. The chief of them being the Edomites. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Because the time is going to come when the elements are going to completely melt with fervent heat. According to the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 4. Excuse me, 4, verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, the proud of the wicked, Esau, Edom, as well as two-thirds of the nation of Israel, as well as the heathen nations. Yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, save the Lord Yahweh of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So neither root nor branch will be left in this land once the Lord has completely eviscerated it. Psalms 28, verse 21, excuse me. Wow, that's a spirit. I didn't even, <laughs> I'm going to read this, man. That's the spirit. Psalms 28, verse 3. Draw me not away with the wicked. Right? And that's what we prayed to the Lord not to do. Not to draw us away with the wicked because the wicked are going to be drawn away into perdition, into destruction, into the lake of fire. And with the works of iniquity. Which is sin upon sin. What is sin? First John chapter 3, verse 4. Transgression of the law. We're given the laws, the nation of Israel. Psalm chapter 147, verse 19. Making us a holy, which means separate, 
nation of people unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, according to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. Draw me not away with the wicked, okay? With the wicked and with the wicked of our people and with the workers of iniquity, which is sin upon sin. Who are the workers of iniquity? Two thirds of the nation of Israel, right? As well as Esau, Eden, which claims that they follow the scriptures, which that's a lie. That's, a, that's, that's, that's not true. Which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their heart. That's why the scripture says it. And if they do of good, they do of it unwillingly. And at the last, they shall declare their wickedness. Because the Lord said to never trust thine enemies. For as iron rusteth, so do of his wickedness. Because this devil, he can't do right. He's the wicked. His soul, which is uh, which is lifted up in him, is not upright. So why the hell would you tr would you trust the devil, man? Seeing that every time he makes all these different promises, he reneges. He goes right back and breaks them, and then he shows you why he's not to be trusted and why he's the devil. The word devil means deceiver. Give them according to their deeds and according to, their, to, to the wickedness of their endeavors. And what is their chief endeavor? To cause all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark, which is the RFID market chip, which is a mark of the beast, in their right hand or in their foreheads. That's their chief endeavor. That's their goal for their new world order. Give them according to their deeds, which the Lord is going to completely bring to north in the fullness of their sufficiency. When they're going to be in straits in a position of difficulty, man. And according to their wickedness of their endeavors. And not only Esau is going to receive the brute indignation of the Lord. But also two thirds of the nation of Israel. Because they also have wicked endeavors in this life, man. <laughs> Living their lives completely contrary to the scriptures. Give them after the give them after the work of their hands, render to them their desert, because they regard not the works of the Lord Yahweh, nor the operations operation of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. And that's what's gonna happen to the wicked in the very end when the Lord is gonna destroy his kingdom. And then put them, the wicked, Esau Edom, in slavery under the nation of Israel, beginning with Yahweh Shai and the elect. As joint ears under him, okay, in his kingdom, okay, Yahweh Shai, King David, and the rest of the hundred and forty, rest of the hundred and forty-four thousand, okay, which King David is a part of that. On down to the, you know, the elect, the the believers, the men, okay, specifically the men, because the men are the ones that are going to be carrying out, you know, giving out orders, and and these things. Okay, the men are the leaders. They're going to be at the forefront. So now let's go back to Psalms uh, 21, verse 9. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord Yahweh shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. And this is the priest of the Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. Concern how the Lord is going to utterly uh, destroy this land with fire. Okay, and two thirds and the wicked that dwells in it, in the heathens, right? All those that are living that YOLO life, that you only live once life, that party, party, folly, folly, jolly, jolly life. Pardon me, that's what's going to happen. Back in St. Matthew 24, verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be, or Lord Yahweh Shai. His return is going to be. Like as the days of Noah were. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. So just as they're doing today, they're partying. And guess what? While they're partying, the spiritual ark is being completed, is being built. Okay? Until the day's going to come when the Lord is going to completely shut everything down, man. And then you Israelites out there, you're going to be in straits two thirds of you and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be who is Yahweh Shai our Lord 
So, you know, I just wanted to do this in the lesson the spirit, you know, so to do it. And uh, Lord's willing, I was edifying to the elect. Until the next I say, Shalom, Lord's willing, Shalom.